You're listening to the Naked Bible Podcast. To support this podcast, visit nakedbiblepodcast.com and click on the support link in the upper right-hand corner. If you're new to the podcast and Dr. Hyde's approach to the Bible, click on New Start Here at nakedbiblepodcast.com. Welcome to the Naked Bible Podcast, episode 200. I'm the layman, Trey Strickland, and he's the scholar, Dr. Michael Heiser. Here we are, Mike. 200. Can you believe it? Should I be honest? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but it's, here we are, nevertheless. Yeah. Seems like we were just at 100, and here we are at 200. It's amazing how time does not stop, I tell you. Yeah, no, I, that, that's what I was thinking, you know, like, how in the world, we were just at 100, what are we doing here, you know? Yeah, and I keep thinking, you know, I'm going to add cute sound effects and do all kinds of cute things <laughs> for a 200, and, you know, it just sneaks up on you, and, you know. I can record Maury, like, snarling, or, you know, like he, he does do that. Yeah. He tries to act ferocious. We could do that. Yeah, well, I don't know if, if I, I say something s- you don't like, and then we say- can just put the snarl in there. There you, know? you go. Yeah, we need to come up with something, but I mean, again, we haven't missed a weekend yet, so uh, hats off to you, sir. We uh, keep cranking them out, so we appreciate yeah, everybody. Well, we, we've been close a couple of times, but it's come together, so. Yeah, we appreciate everybody still listening to us, so. And yeah, this that, episode- that's, that's probably the greater achievement right there, that, you know, the, but it needs the uh, the lion's share of attention, the people who who actually listened and they stuck with us. Yeah, that's kind of our theme. We again thought it would be good to um, interview people who use the content. Uh, I I mean, this podcast represents three continents. You know, we're going to hear from groups and people all over the Middle East, you know, Africa and and Europe and just everywhere. And it's crazy. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Middle Middle East, Africa and, and more specifically in Europe, Albania. I mean, who in the world thought, you know, that uh, we, I mean, d- did we ever sit down and have a conversation, Trey, like, boy, we need to do this podcast because people in Albania are going to be listening. You know, it, they, we just get people all over the world, but the, the Albanian group is pretty special and we're going to get into why in this episode. Absolutely. Without further ado, Mike, let's just get into these interviews. Okay. Well, we have with us Charlie Curtis, and um, I'm going to let uh, Charlie introduce himself in a moment, but he has a connection, of course, to um, our content, super, the book Supernatural, Unseen Realm, uh, the podcast, and whatnot. And Charlie does ministry in Tanzania, and one of the translation projects for Supernatural uh, has been in the language of uh, Swahili. Uh, with a translator on that end in Tanzania. Uh, but he and Beth have gone over to Tanzania and done ministry there, um, teaching the content. So that's the connection to to us and to the show. We wanted to have him on just to just describe what it is uh, is happening over there. Uh, the, you know, the reception of the content, you know, how it's affecting people, uh, what he does in terms of ministry, that sort of thing. So Charlie, go ahead and, and introduce yourself. And we'll we'll chat about what you do. Again, this I'm Charles Curtis. Um, I'm um, been involved with um, our team from our local church that has that had started a relationship with um, a church in Africa in 2009. We had um, a, um, someone who was really big into missions in our church was asked to go to Africa to check out what was going on. There was a a minister that had contacted our pastor and told us that, you know, we needed to look into that. So he went on his own in 2009 and uh, was amazed at what he saw and came back and suggested that uh, our church organize a a mission trip there, which we did. We did about 20 people from our church went out in uh, the summer of 2010. And, um, since then, we've, we've gone um, every year since then. I think there was only one year where I think we brought some folks from, from there over here. But we've, we've um, developed a very close relationship with uh, the people there that we're working with in Tanzania. And uh, in particular, our, our work there is, is in partnership with a church in the Kilimanjaro region 
the name of that church is uh, PEFA, and forgive me if I don't say it completely right, but it's the Pentecostal Evangelic Fellowship of Africa. And the, the pastor in that particular church is Elliot Mbise. And uh, together, our church and, and Elieta have both done, uh, coordinated lots of ministry towards uh, orphans and widows in the Kilimanjaro region. And beginning in 2013, we began uh, work on a church plant in a Muslim village on the east coast of Tanzania, a region called Tonga. It's just outside of Tonga City. And the name of the, uh, the village is Maswani Shamba. And that church has been completed. And right now, from the emails that we've been receiving, uh, the church has been... Uh, providing lots of, of ministry and, and care in that community for the past couple of years now and is beginning to grow. In addition to that, beginning in 2013, Elieta had told us that there was a, uh, a hunger to know more, to learn more. And were there, uh, was there any possibility that teachers could come to Tanzania and uh, provide education or teach biblical teaching to pastors? in both the Kilimanjaro region and eventually it was in the Tonga region as well. We started that in 2013, and initially our pastor was supposed to head that up. And unfortunately, he he was um, battling illness at that time and couldn't go and had asked uh, if I would take his place. And that was in 2013, and we did the conference on the differences between Islam and Christianity. And uh, we had about I may be uh, between 80 and 100 pastors in attendance in um, in both locations. And these pastors, uh, just for a little background, they come from very remote areas. Um, the one thing I have learned about the people of Tanzania, particularly within the church, is their hunger to know more about the Bible is like nothing else I've ever seen. And they will hitch a ride. Uh, spend the night, you know, wherever they can find a place to lay their head on on very long travels to get to these conferences. So it's a little daunting whenever you get out there to uh, to know that and hope that you you pray that you do a good job. And mm -hmm. but um, the um, the conferences in 2013 were were very successful, and uh, they called us back. And in 2015, we did a conference in both locations over the kingdom. The kingdom of God, and it was really driven mainly by Dallas Willard's Divine Conspiracy. And uh, in 2016, we revived the the first conference on the distinctions between Christianity and Islam. And again, I think all three of them were were relatively the same attendance, um, pretty successful as far as the, uh, the the desire for materials. They, everybody, when you go out there, they want to they want to have your slides. They want to have references, whatever they can get their hands on. Mm -hmm. So this year, the need is always driven by uh, the folks in uh, in Tanzania, and we've been asked to go out there and really handle two two requests. One is is that when Beth went out and introduced the concept of the De Deuteronomy 32 worldview or the Divine Council worldview. Their interest was was peaked, to say the least. And uh, now, with the, of course, the book has been translated in Swahili and it's available to them to read. They they want to know more about it, but they're also wanting a a practical aspect. How do we take the Deuteronomy 32 worldview and uh, apply it in our churches, our specific mm -hmm. churches, and in particular? Uh, one of the things that they specifically said is we want to know more about how to grow our churches deeper rather than bigger. Mm -hmm. And so I think that there's a lot of of harmony between the Deuteronomy 32 worldview, you know, and the, the kingdom worldview, like the one we did in 15 with Willard's uh, book. And I think that uh, right now what we're working on is putting together the slides and looking at going out in June to present it in two locations again, the Kilimanjaro region and also in Tonga. Now, when when Beth went out, were you along with Beth or did she do that herself? 
last year Beth went out there. I didn't go. Um, I've gone to to Africa three times with her, but last year I did not go. Okay. Yeah, I know from corresponding, you know, and chatting with her on the phone that there seemed to be a, it, I mean, may, maybe it's just Beth. <laughs> she can be pretty dramatic, <laughs> but uh, there seemed to be a pretty dramatic response to it. Um, and that, that actually led to, or it was part of the, hey, you know, we heard about the translation project, you know, that I guess she had mentioned it or something. And so someone emerged from that community or that gathering anyway, Donald, you know, to do the translation. So what, what, what are your impressions of, of what she has talked to you about? And, you know, sort of, sort of since that initial kind of orientation, you know, very specifically with divine counsel stuff, I, I, I guess our audience would probably be curious as to, was this old, was this new, um, you know, could they, they sort of see with more clarity than, you know, typically lots of Christians over here, you know, that, you know, you introduce them to the content and they just look at you like you got two heads or something. Um, when we went, was there a difference there? So tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, and before, before they left last summer, I asked her for a copy of her slides. So I got to see the content that she was going to be using. And I was really excited. Um, really wished I could have been there. But when they came back, the way uh, Beth had described it was, is that it just, the response was amazing. Um, it sounded like it was a whole lot more, a whole lot more uh, than, than what I've, I've ever seen over there. Um, there's always been a, a, an insatiable hunger to learn for, um, you know, the stuff that we've, the subjects that we've talked about. But in this particular case, I don't think that, I don't think it was familiar to them. I think in that regard, they're a lot like us here, but they were, it's like an aha moments for them in lots of ways. And, and I, I could not explain that to you that well, because not being there, I'm just sort of reporting, you know, mm -hmm. what, what I was told. But um, I know, I know this, that the books that were brought out there were, were in high demand. Yeah, I sent, yeah, I can't remember how many I sent out, but I remember sending some out. Yeah, their 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 appreciation for that, from what I was told, was amazing, and they wanted more, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think that's the context for this year's trip. Yeah, I, I've I mean I've presented divine council stuff before um, with, and I remember one particular place in San Diego. This was years ago. This is before uh, I even had completed the the myth that was true draft that would become, you know, or, or at least in, in part become unseen realm. And there were five or six pastors from Africa at, at this event. And afterwards they, you know, I mean, they were really excited about it. They were excited because it's like, finally, you know, we, we, we hear somebody over here say what we more or less just experience all the time, you know, and, and, you know, to them it was, they, it was more like a, a grateful response that somebody finally said something as opposed to it being new. So I was curious, you know, because I've, I've had the other side as well, that uh, this is sort of Christian stuff 101, yeah, as far as believing, you know, that, that the supernatural is real and, and it, you, you run into it, you know, and, and they were like, yeah, like, we don't go a week without having to deal with something, you know. So I was just curious, you know, what the... Uh, you know what that was like one of the things that whenever i go over there they they really show me they teach me a lot i tell them that and it sounds kind of a little cliche but they really do because whenever we go over there there's there's always a, a time whenever someone falls sick they have you know someone will get malaria mm -hmm. um, or or maybe they just whatever the whatever the case may be and and over here we're just so accustomed to being able to just, you know, go to the doctor or get hold of some medication, or, you know, and, and over there, they rely so heavily on prayer. It's an immediate response for them. And, mm -hmm. and, it, and so for them to see God intervene and, and answer prayers is, is not something that's like over here, we, we, we see that too, but over there, it's sort of like, that's, that's this, this sort of like taking ibuprofen for us, for them, and the Holy Spirit heals them from whatever they were 
suffering with, it, it's a little more, they're, they're, they're a lot more open in anticipation of what God's going to do. Whereas mm-hmm. I think here we're, we're so reliant on technology and, and medicine and everything else that it's, it's a whole lot different for us. Mm-hmm. Now, what, what's the language situation over there? How many speak English? Does everybody speak English, you know, 80%, 20%? What, what, what's the deal there? Um, yeah, I would say it was over 50% speak some English. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, whenever I'm, I'm at a conference in the past, there would be some that would know a little bit of English that would struggle. Uh, but there, you'd be surprised at how many do know English and know it very well. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I, I guess we can we can task you with, with something. I mean, if you're going to go over in June, um, you know, they, they've got the Swahili translation now. Make sure that they understand they can do whatever they want with that. Uh, they can print it. They can, if, if they have digital devices or they take it into the city, I mean, w- whatever. It, it's, it's free. It's, they can do whatever they want with it, reproduce it as often as, as possible, that sort of thing. What, um, I'd like you to ask them what, what other kinds of things specifically they, they need um, in terms of, of content or anything. I mean, we're, we're going to be doing some discipleship stuff this year, you know, written content and then put, putting that out to translators. Um, so I'd, I don't want to reinvent the wheel if, if they already have things like that, you know, from some other ministry in the past uh, in their case. But it would be nice to know, you know, what a group like that really needs, both to use themselves and then to, to disseminate and multiply and so on and so forth. I know that you mentioned discipleship. That is a big, that's a big thing. They would, they would definitely like whatever was available for that topic. Try, try to narrow it, you know, like, like, again, topically, because when, you know, I, I don't want to be silly here, but when we think of discipleship, uh, again, this is just, I'm, this is my own context, you know, growing up as a Christian. Discipleship meant um, getting material on, okay, you should read your Bible, you should pray, you should come to church, you should tithe, you should get baptized. You know, that was, that was kind of, that was discipleship. You know, after that, it's show up and, and listen to the preaching, which, of course, if the preaching is good, that, that's great. You know, that, that's really helpful. But it would be nice to know if there's like some specific issue or, or you know, something really that's kind of a sweet spot over there that they, they just run into all the time or, or really struggle with that sort of thing. So if you can do a little fishing, that'd be great. Sure, sure. I do know that, uh, and it's similar over here, but discipleship in terms of uh, that, what they've witnessed a lot of is um, there, there's such a focus on the emotional part of it, the, um, the experiential part of it. But they, they recognize that, you know, just like we're beginning to recognize over here, that there needs to be more than that. There needs to mm-hmm. be a, yeah, I know I have to be a disciple of Jesus, but what exactly does that mean? Mm-hmm. What does that look like? Mm-hmm. I think I think that is, um, that, that's where they're at. Yeah, it might be as simple as that. You know, like, in, in okay, beyond this emotional stuff or this this feeling I get or, you know, again, I don't want to be too pejorative, but but I, I have American Christians here in mind behind, you know, the sort of the, the warm, fuzzy feeling that, uh, you know, I get when I listen to the worship band. I mean, what, and I'm here every week, what, what am I supposed to do? Right. You know? Like, what's this supposed to be? I'm covering everything on the list here and I don't get it. What's the deal? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Okay. It, so it, it seems to be pretty pretty basic and, and pretty broad then. But if you, if you run into that, anything specific, let us know. Well, I have one more question. Um, when when Beth brought, you said she exposed them to the podcast. I imagine she had a, a device with like MP3s on it or something. So it, it wasn't something they could tune into or was it? You know, like like, like what, what what is the – I know we wanted to have Donald on with us and, and – the government over there just shuts the electricity off randomly and it's very unpredictable. So that didn't work out, but beyond the electricity problem, uh, <laughs> the unpredictability of that, what is the technological situation? Like, do people have phones? Do they have, you know, like art, do they have Walkman, you know, like from the eighties or something? What, what, what's going on over there? Yeah, th- 
basically most of their internet is wireless from the cellular right. provider and right. and it's spotty you know as you can imagine the, the town it's it's pretty good but the speeds are not like the speeds we get here everybody pretty much carries a remember those old nokia phones from the yep that there's a lot of those but according to to folks that went last year you know some the, the smartphones are making their way in that area so okay. But there's no there's no wireline anything when it comes to broadband. So we rely on wireless more than anything else. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if we put episodes on a on a flash drive, you know, and you took it over there, and then they could they could copy them from That's desktop to desktop. You know, it, it, is that worth doing? I think so. Definitely okay. think so. Okay. Well. You know, we'll we'll just plan on on getting that to you, and you can reproduce it. You know, however you're you're able to do that. Well, I'm I'm glad you could give us a little little report um, about the, the fact that supernatural, especially the book, but more generally the divine council stuff. You know, is is penetrating that part of Africa. I mean, we we have listeners all over the world. You know, I mean, we you know, Trey and I, you know, both get emails from people who catch the podcast in, in in the oddest places and circumstances. So, you know, when, when, since we had a translation project going, you know, with, with, you know, someone you have immediate contact with, and of course, knowing that you do this, we wanted to have you on just so that you could share a little bit with the, uh, with the podcast audience uh, and so that they can know, you know, that this kind of stuff is happening and this is not an isolated thing. You know, we've got over 20 translation projects. I mean, half of them are done now. But this sort of thing is happening everywhere. And, you know, we we also talked to some people in the Middle East. Again, we can't really be more specific than that. And we have uh, another interview set up for um, Eastern Europe. But this sort of thing is happening all over the place. So we just wanted to include Africa. So thanks for spending a little bit of time with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. I appreciate it. Well, we're fortunate to have Donald Mimari. And Donald, you'll have to correct me if I'm saying your last name incorrectly. Uh, we're Mari. fortunate to have M Mari. Mari. Okay. Uh, we're fortunate to have Donald with us. He is online with us from Africa. So why don't you introduce yourself a little bit, uh, where you're at and what you do? Okay, my name is Donald Dimari. I am from Sanyaju in Kilimanjaro, Tanzania. I am a secondary school teacher. Currently, I'm doing my master's degree in, in educational management at Tumaini University, Makumira, in Arusha, Tanzania. Wow. What yeah. do you teach? I teach English. Okay. Well, then you were the perfect person. <laughs> To, to, uh, to translate Supernatural, uh, Donald is our translator, our Swahili translator for my book, uh, Supernatural. Sure. Yeah, so thank you for doing that. <laughs> that was a lot of work. Thank, thank you. you for that. Thank you also for giving me this important task. Well, we'd just like to chat a little bit about, um, I guess, the impact um, that charlie and others have had in ministry out there and you yourself and how the uh how the kind of teaching in the book has been received so you can tell can you tell us a little bit about that yeah i can say a little bit the the books i know that i have worked on one of the books that is supernatural but we have we have been with for quite some time since 2011 she has been teaching on various places in Kilimanjaro and some places of Arusha and Tanga through conferences the she has been using your your your, your books as references of her teachings so they have been very help, helpful and I think now it is going to be much more easier because we have it now in Swahili. Mm -hmm. Last time she had to take some phrases from the book and then put it into the materials. But if we have the book now in Swahili, it is easier for the pastors now 
to get the copy and the, use them. Mm -hmm. How yeah. how are you? How do you imagine you will be able to distribute the translation? Is it going to be print or digital? How do you imagine uh, that can be done? And and what can we do to help? Mm. I think both ways can be used eh? since most of the people here are using smartphones so they can access the material online if mm -hmm. it is free especially and uh, for the printed ones they can also be useful maybe when we, we, we hold a conference we can have some copies and give to the people who are attending so that they have something to rely on. Mm -hmm. um, would it help if we, I was going to say, would it help if we printed some here? And I know mm -hmm. Charlie is going back there in June. I don't know that we can accomplish that by June, mm -hmm. but um, do you have a printer there? And even if you do, is that something we should think about doing? I think I think it will be helpful, though I cannot say to what extent, but the way I, I worked on that book, or I found that it has so many important things which people need to to get them. Mm -hmm. and so I think if we have some some copies, they would be very helpful. If, if even f not so many copies, but even... Uh, about 100 200 mm -hmm. they can help is is there a printer uh near you because we could also help pay for that uh, do you have a printer uh, in, in a nearby town or city or how does that work yeah the printers are there but i don't know exactly how much it costs for printing a copy mm -hmm. maybe i if I, I go there and check to see how, how it works. Yeah, let, let us know how much that would cost. You just ask him how much would it cost for 100 or 500, uh, and then uh, let me know. You can let, uh, you know, you, we, can, we can discuss that by emails when, whenever you know. I, I will. Okay, what, what will is your, you. okay. Do you have a, a specific role uh, in a in a church there, or teaching the Bible outside of teaching English, or do you sort of do a little of all of that? I'm just a, just a church member. Um, I I don't have a specific role, but I'm, I I just translate for the people who are coming from different places who are not familiar with Swahili. Mm -hmm. Mm, yeah, that's the main thing I do, and teaching is my job. So I'm I'm just doing it for mm -hmm. yeah for for getting income. Right. How how many students do you have? It's a public school, so it depends. Sometimes around the my, my one class, you find a class with around fifty to eighty students. What age? Mm, from the age of 15 to 19. Okay. Yeah. I, I, do you have a required curriculum? Yeah, the curriculum we have there. I was, I was going to say, if, if you didn't have a lot of rules, maybe you could sneak uh, Supernatural in as a textbook. <laughs> Uh, we would send send them free to you. Mm, we, we we can we can we can use them when we are we we we, when we are having those. We, we in in schools in public schools we have one day for religious studies. Oh. So in that particular period we can just use them. So. Oh, that, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll remember that. Wow. So now when, uh, one more question, mm -hmm. when, when, uh, you have Charlie or someone else come, uh, to teach, is mm -hmm. that, is that connected to just one particular church or you get people from everywhere? 
that come to that? And and how do people uh, find out? Uh, at the beginning, we had people from almost all churches, but right now, the teachings are focusing on pastors from one church. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. So you're are this is they're specifically trying to help pastors learn more. Yeah. And then they can yeah. teach uh, other people. All right. Yes. Wow. Well, we're we're glad that we could uh, you know play a little part uh, in this. And um, I told Charlie we talked to Charlie uh, for this episode of the podcast that mm. uh, we are going to be sending audio files of the podcast yes. to him on on thumb drives, flash drives, and mm-hmm. you know so you can you can expect him to have some of those when he. Um, when he gets there again, but okay. anything, anything uh, you that would be useful, um, if we mm. can help you get those things or make those things, uh, we we are interested in doing that. And so, well, yeah. the, our talk here will be on that on that podcast um, mm-hmm. soon. It'll be episode two hundred, so you can listen yeah. to yourself. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, thanks for for sharing a, a few minutes with us. And like I said, if if you need something, uh, you have to let us know, and we can uh, we can do what we can to help you. Thank you too, and I'm very glad to hear from you. Yep, too. thank you for all your work in the in the supernatural translation. We really appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it too for giving me that chance to work on it. Good. We don't want to keep you too late. Thank you. Thank you, Trey. Thank you. Okay, have a good night. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Doc. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm sure there's probably things you can't say about yourself, but is there anything you can say? <laughs> yeah. So my name is Michael Burke. Grew up in a small town in Missouri. Um, I'm half Filipino and half uh, Irish-American. And because of the half Filipino side, I don't age as fast as my predecessors, which (laughs) is a good thing now. But as I was growing up, I was always the shortest and the smallest of my peers, which made me a very easy target for bullies. And Mm -hmm. so I found myself very early on having to dodge bullies and think quick on my feet to avoid confrontation. But thanks uh, thanks be to God that that was just a phase and I grew out of it that through high school and college, I developed martial arts skills. Um, I learned how to see threats before they developed into a confrontation. And what I learned was through strength and discipline in what God was showing me in the Bible, that you can actually apply it to your life to create um, a posture of dominance, not not in a way where you put people under, but where you don't uh, present yourself vulnerable to uh, being attacked or taken advantage of. So it's it's a posture of uh, what God has done for you, and then you reflect that into the land to create safety and a presence of the living God where um, evil doesn't see you as an easy target anymore, where basically evil sees you as um, as a threat. And I don't I don't I don't think it's biblical that for us as Christians to be afraid of the threats that exist. I I, I don't think that we should be running and hiding from the darkness. I do think it is biblical that the darkness be running from us. So that's pretty much what I've been doing the last 10 to 12 years, uh, taking my experience in force recon with the U.S. Marine Corps and then going uh, volunteering with anti-human trafficking ministries and Mm -hmm. basically um, missionary groups that are in in hostile areas and giving them the tools and the, the words that God has given me of basically uh, embodying the gospel, which which isn't just words, but is power, that through the cross, we actually can um, become more than conquerors, um, that evil develops and manifests itself in multiple different ways, whether that's through bullies or poverty or disease, pestilence, lack of resources, that evil can can come against us in multiple ways, but through the power of the gospel, we can actually stand up against it and push it back and actually bring heaven to earth and create a, a little pocket of the presence of God here on earth through mm-hmm. the words that we preach. Uh, um, we, we 
we put what we preach into practice and it, and it, you could see the fruit of it everywhere you go. So that's pretty much the theme of my life thus far. Um, now I'm working in the Middle East and yeah, I, I'm not going to get into the details right. for security reasons, but yeah, we'll, we'll um, come, we'll come back to the, to the specifics of that as you're able to give them. Uh, okay. We also have with us uh, Belle. What can you say about yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I can say about myself. I grew up uh, in a single parent and a mom who taught volunteerism and to give your life away. And to even though we didn't have, I learned we learned to give. And so that's the nature of my heart to give. And I found Christ at a really very early age because uh, my mom had a she had surgery. And they didn't think she was going to come out of the hospital. And so I found Christ then, you know, because when you don't want your mom to pass away, you know, that's where I found Christ at. And because of that, I have a very compassionate heart. And God gave me a dream uh, some time ago when I was growing up that my gift is loving people and being very compassionate. And that has entailed really giving as my ministry that I do, as I found, is that giving people and encouraging people. There was a little lady, her name was uh, Sister Mary Spencer, who mentored me for seven years before she passed away. And she had the prison ministry. She, the name for her ministry was uh, the Holy Woman of God. And she taught me how to live a life of holiness. And uh, Billy Graham said a great thing that once you become a Christian, people are going to look at you and they're going to look to see if you walk the walk and talk the talk. So here, here people know, which I think is really very interesting, is that even if they're another culture, they can feel the love of God in your heart. And that's, what's, and that's what I'm doing, walking and doing the love of God, which changes people's heart. Because when they see love and they feel love and they, 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 they feel love that you're giving them, it changes the whole dynamics of that. And uh, I found that that has been a great change of compassion and love for people and the people of God, no matter what color they are, no matter what religion they are, because that shows them the true love of God. And that's where I'm at. So, yeah. Now, now uh, we were connected to you or made aware of you by a mutual friend. Uh, John is his name. Yes. And my my question is, do the two of you, Michael and Bell, do you are you together geographically? Are you? I mean, what what are the circumstances here? Because what what we want to talk about, and I know we're a bit constrained for time because Michael might have something thrown on his desk here shortly. But yes. um, sort of like, are you are you together geographically separate? Why would John mention both of you together? And then we want to talk about how. Uh, the content of, of Supernatural uh, has, you know, had an impact or how you're using that, where you're at and what you're doing. Oh, great, 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 great. Um, you want to, you want to take that, uh, Mike? We're just, uh, we're just, uh, it's kind of hard to explain that one. Um, we are. Well, I can explain what I do. Basically, I am here providing security for the U.S. State Department at the U.S. Embassy. And I have become the volunteer pastor for the Christian chapel service here. Uh, Somewhere in the Middle East, East, right? Right. We, we've had, we've had uh, a military chaplain prior, but when the military separated, um, it kind of fell into my lap to continue the church service here. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's predominantly mainly for American citizens and the U.S. mission. And it, it's it's basically um, a small city, mm-hmm. and so it's a ministry in itself. But uh, the Lord is definitely using us. We've developed uh, multiple small groups throughout this this little city of ours, and um, I can see that supernatural would be a great material um, tool to develop the minds of uh, our disciples here. Now, is, are are you able to? I mean, John had asked me for the several of the translations. Have you yes. used them, or you have plans for that, or what? Yes, yes. I'm actually, you know, actually, I was praying about it because it's. I really love the book. You know, I really I enjoy the book, and so I'm turning it into a syllabus. So it's it's so we're going to we we've been using it teachable, but the problem is is that breaking it down, making it teachable, mm-hmm. you know, in the smaller groups, making it teachable, and so yes. 
Uh, so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm making it to a uh, palatable syllabus where they can use it as teaching tools during the teaching times because where it's just, I cannot just tell you how the explosion of the little small satellite groups, is, as Mike is telling you, it's just, and not only that, I'm sending them, uh, once we're starting to teach them uh, on what the book is, what I want to do is just send the syllabus because everybody can't, you know, take the book and take everything with them. What I want to be able to do is just tell them to take a copy uh, mm -hmm. where they're going and then take it to where they live at, you know, in the country that they live at so they can go in and teach that. So it actually is going to become a teaching tools where it's actually going with individuals that have learned it and they're going to take it and go with it. So that's the really great thing about it. It's 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 actually like little little groups that are going and then they're taking it back to their homes. And when they're learning it and they're understanding it, they're taking it back. And it's a really actually a great teaching tool. And I really like your your other book that's called The Unfiltered Bible. That's really good, too. Love that one, too. Great book. I'm, I'm working on a syllabus for that, too, but it's just one at, <laughs> one at a time. I've got a lot of things on my plate that I'm kind of doing right now because I'm doing it when I'm not working. So but yeah, make sure just, make sure that people know with Supernatural, whether they get it in English form or some other form, uh, that is completely free for distribution and they can have it translated into other languages if they want. Um, we, we don't have a Farsi yet, you know, so for the Middle East, that's one of the languages that we're, you know, we're hoping to get at some point, but, you know, Arabic, obviously we have now. Yes. Awesome. French was so, finished yeah. this week. I know that, that a lot of these Middle Eastern countries, French is also a, yes. an important language. So that one just dropped this week. So it'll, it'll be up in the folder. I don't know if John gave you uh, folder access or how he gave it to you, but it's, no, he it's, just, it's there. Yeah. Uh, he just sent it through an email, but I'm telling you that is powerful. So what I'm doing is taking the syllabus and translating it into the language. So when it when it's taught, it's taught with the the syllabus. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. So I'm telling I'm I'm going to send you a copy when I'm done because I'm still getting some of the I'm getting someone to look at it and just going because it's actually coming like because your book is so great. I'm taking the chapters and making it to the syllabus, and I'm just mm -hmm. saying okay. So it's actually it's it's almost it's almost like a little journal book form because I want them to be able to understand it, chew it, and get it, and then take it because it's a great great book, great book. It's a really good book, really good book. So I uh, and I want to do that to the unabridged one, also the unfiltered Bible, uh, the the other book too. I want right, to do the, that. The both most the, recent one, yeah. Yes. Now. Um, Michael or or Bell, I mean, what what's been the? Just give us an idea of what the re response has been, either pushback or or something that people have really, you know, had a bit of a fire lit under them, or something has become clear. Um, just something where you've seen it become meaningful to somebody. I can give you an example. Like we were reading through the books, and what happens is is that. I think a lot of times when they're teaching in about the supernatural, a lot of people really don't know. Like a lot of people that are coming from Hindi and other cultures like that, they really, when they're getting in the gospel, it really opens, it really kind of unveils it for them. Does mm -hmm. that understand what I'm saying? It gets, it unveils it and they're really, uh, they know that there, there are other forces, but this, they're not taught about, it, it helps them to understand the plain uh, English and plain understanding of what the supernatural is. And it's, it's it really is an eye opener. And one of the guys, when we were talking about it, and he said, really? You know, he, it was that, that's my <laughs> version of, you know, he was, he, you know, his eyes kind of got big and he, and it really, and he really got a, really a hold of it. And that's what it does is that it's the entrance of the word of God brings light. And that, and you can see it and you can see the change in their understanding. And it's so great. So that's why I love it. I love it. I love what the do what it's doing to people and the change that they're getting from it because they're getting a true change. You may not be able to talk to everybody, but they really are really loving it. They're really loving it. So, yes, it's really changed. Well, we're, yeah, we're <laughs> glad really to hear changed. that. Michael, yeah, I'm really wondering changed. how much how much. Now that it's sort of divorced from the the military, you know, you're you're subsuming this role of of being the chaplain. Um, how much oversight is there over you, and are you 
I mean, how much of the content that you give do you have control over? Uh, I have 100% control of the church ministry here. Oh, that's so, nice. Um, yeah, I I had two gentlemen working on our co-ed Bible study. We have a, a, a women's study on Tuesday nights, a co-ed study on Thursday nights, and a men's study on Friday nights. Um, I've yet to receive the materials um, to distribute. We just finished a study uh, last week, and so we are looking forward for more materials to put out to our are, are groups. you looking are you looking for hard copy or digital right hard copy okay um another another question did you guys listen to the podcast at all are you able to do yes. that i'm just wondering if there are any sort of firewalls or obstacles or you know what what the situation is over there well the only thing that i can tell you is that the uh, the church that that I'm speaking of is a, it's a, it's a church made, made up, mainly made up of expats, uh, people from uh, foreign nationals of Arabic, Kenyan, Indian, and uh, Peruvian. And just, uh, it's, it's a really multicultural, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, but it's really catching fire. It's really, a, really a lot of satellite groups. It's, it is, if, if you, it's just amazing what the power of God is going on here. It is, it is just absolutely amazing. And the materials that John has been sending us is just incredible. So we're just waiting on some more things to come by. And, and Mike, I'll give you a copy of the syllabus um, as soon as I finish, but I'll also send you guys a copy. I think you'll really enjoy it and that you can use it as a teaching tool also. And what I want to do is I'm trying to get some other stuff to, uh, other people to translate a couple other tracks and things in Arabic. We have great groups, great groups of people that are on fire for God. And they, they're they hungry for it. They're very hungry for it. We should mention um, John's ministry in this. Um, yes. And what, what, yes. And so just just say a little bit about you know either of you, what your connection is to, to his ministry, the Soldier's Bible ministry. For me, he, he just, uh, he he blessed us. There was such a need uh, in in our in our chapel in our church that we have uh, is called All Nations Church, and they were they were without Bibles, and the chaplain there uh, got in touch with John and he sent those Bibles and it was they were so grateful to receive Bibles because they were so, they were without Bibles, so that's how the mm -hmm. connection was was through the chaplain, and uh, he has sent us. Uh, quite a bit of material they were using like devotionals and things like that. And it's mm -hmm. really helped the growth of the congregation, which is quite a few people because a lot of people, a lot of the workers uh, and a lot of the people that come in the evening time, that's why the congregation is really pretty big. It's a pretty good size. Yes. And it's usually, it is packed. And there, those satellite groups are going home and taking their information home and taking that and taking the fire that they have home where they are. Mm -hmm. so, Michael, yeah. how about you? What What's your connection to John? I was introduced to John by Bell, and okay. it's the same thing. We usually get Bibles donated from different churches here at the embassy. So people would take Bibles, and we encourage them to take them back to their uh, – because most people are, are seasonal here. They come mm -hmm. here, they do their, their short-term mission, and then they go home. Um, mm -hmm. So we're always – getting Bibles, giving them out, getting Bibles, giving them out. And so, yes, Brother John is quite the blessing to be able to yes. bring yes. so many Bibles in different translations. That's something we've definitely been missing. So it's mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. Yay. Wow. Yeah, he's our hero. Yeah, he's our hero. <laughs> well, I'm, sh I'm sure he'll hear that. I'm sure he'll listen. So, you know, kudos to you, John. <laughs> yeah. I, I know he's not, he, John's just a good guy. You know, he, this, this is really a big, a big uh, concern to him, which of course is why he started the ministry and, you know, his heart's in it. So he'll, uh, he'll enjoy hearing that. Well, I want to, I want to thank you guys for contributing a little bit to what is going to become our, our 200th episode on the podcast. We're you know, just talking to people in different parts of the world. Uh, some can be uh, more open than others as far as, you know, who they are and their, their information geographically and what they're doing. But you guys will be part of that. Um, 
you know that we just figured that would be a good thing to do for that that benchmark uh, episode because the we, we get emails a lot you know that people are using the content and especially as the translations are starting to drop now you know I'm I'm just glad that it's it's you know useful that's really why we do it to try to do something useful for yeah. uh, for believers. And but I want to let yeah I want to let you know it's more than useful it's very educational and. Um, uh, we're trying to get the, the a lot of the people that are actually benefit benefiting from it. What I'd like to be able to do is after they we're, we're we're going to finish uh, once they finish their training, we want to come and do the, we would like to do a graduation and and that's what I'm just thinking of once they go through the training is do a graduation and have mm-hmm. them come and speak to you so you can hear for yourself what it's done so mm-hmm. you can actually hear the results. So that's what, yeah. The, the other thing is, is if, if you guys, if you guys need anything, you could email me or reach out to John and he'll, he'll send it you know to me. Um, in 2018, we're going to be, we're, we're trying to put some thought into it now, a little, little bit of planning thought to produce something useful for discipleship that incorporates mm-hmm. the content. I mean, your syllabus sounds you know, like, like you're already you know, down that road. Um, the, the idea is to produce something, you know, brief, but that uses the content in discipleship. And then once that's mm-hmm. produced in English, pass it around to some people in different, different cultural groups, different people groups, and then have them work it over um, or, or adapt it uh, to their own situation. And then ultimately get that stuff translated. Because now that I know all these translators, it's like, they're just ducks on the pond, you know, really. I mean, they're, they're, they're right there. They, they're, they're good at what they do. They're competent. This, this would be a lot shorter than supernatural. So we could, we could produce a number of things um, through, through my nonprofit that would, again, you know, just, just be useful. So if you have ideas, things that that you'd like to see, uh, please, by all means, pass them on. Or if you, if you're angling for something, you need something, you got to let us know. You know, I think it it just, um, you know, what I really was praying about is that it's such a, both of them are such great books that, that they would have like a journal attached to it. You, you, does it make sense what I'm saying? Because I'm doing the syllabus, but it-, it Send me a because, sample. Send, send me a, a sample, pay, a couple pages of, of what you're you're thinking so I can, I can visualize it. Okay. Because it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a great book, but you know, it's a, it's, People need to meditate on it after they read just one chapter. They need to meditate on it and mm-hmm. really get in and just really get into it. That's what I'm wanting them to do. So mm-hmm. when they get fi- so when they get finished with the book, it's actually a class. The book is a class. The mm-hmm. book itself is a teaching class. And when they get finished with it, you know, it will take them to another level. And that's what I'm wanting to do. So mm-hmm. that's that's Michael, do you have anything anything to add? I know again you're a little bit pressed for time, but oh, I, I just I just think it's amazing um, that you are able to give the word of God out to so many people. I think it's awesome that the Lord has given you such a vision for this to proclaim the word yes. of God in, in such a way. Yes. Um, I do think that when we focus on the negativity, there's always something wrong with the world, and when we focus on <laughs> yeah. that, uh, we we lose sight of what God is doing. And we yes. actually, um, we kind of uh, throw off our royalty. We, we break fellowship with God when we focus too much on the, the wars and, and the violence and the pain and the suffering. Um, not that those things don't exist. They do exist. But the provision of God exists in the, in the problem, that where we plant our seeds of faith, it's always in somebody else's problems. So I think it's amazing that you are getting out the testimony of what God's doing in this region, because most of the time people just hear the negativity and, sure. and the heartache mm-hmm. and the tragedy, but there is real miracles going on. And the Bible says that he inhabits the praise of his people. And so that's what's going on here, that there is a community praising the name of God and it's growing yes. day yes. by day. Yeah, well, we tend yes. to gravitate toward that. I mean, you, you probably have heard me before, you know, say something to that effect that I, I enjoy finding believers in all sorts of odd places, just doing stuff that needs to be done. And they, they don't stop and ask for permission. They don't, you know, sort of look at, <laughs> at the problems. And, you know, it, it's just that I just like to see that. I, I love to run into it where there's so much that could be done that gets stymied either by the kind of stuff, you know, Michael's referring to, or just, you know, just kind of mind numbing bureaucracy. You know, it, it, 
you know, just get off your butt and do it. <laughs> yes. Amen. You know, Amen. I, I just Amen. enjoy Amen. seeing. So Amen. Yeah, we tend to gravitate toward that kind of thing here. And maybe there's a bit of a mischievous streak involved in it too, but yeah, it, it's just fun to see people do things that, that need to be done and, you know, and, and God will be in it. He'll bless it. Oh, I, yes. I, I agree. I completely agree. You know, this is, if I can, if you would have told me, you know, if you would have told me, if I'm telling you it's just taking off, if I, if you, if it is such taking off, it is just the word of God, all of it's taking off. And it's just, we were just talking about how fast it's going taking off and how fast and powerful. And I mean, it's just moving and it's just going just beyond. It's just, it's just mind boggling. The supernatural things. If we, if you can only know the supernatural things that God is doing here, incredibly so just from here, from yeah, here. So that, yes, that's what we like to hear. <laughs> oh yeah. And I'm happy about it. And you know what? You don't ask, you just get it done. So amen. amen. Yeah. Well, thank you both. Um, be safe. Uh, I know you, uh, your, your heart's in what you're doing and the Lord be with you and the people that you minister to as well. Amen. Well, thanks for having us. Thank you. For, thank, you. thank you for having us. And you, thank you for the books. Thank you for the books and thank you for the material that we're using. And you know what? John is my hero and you're my, and you're my hero too, because this is what it is. It, it empowers, it, it, it's empowering a lot of people. It really is. No, no kidding. No kidding. It really is. Thank well, you. That's great. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, God thank bless you. you. Well, we have three people with us from Albania. And uh, when I asked them to introduce themselves, they could get more uh, specific than that as far as city and ministry and, and that sort of thing. We have uh, David, Bruna, and I think it's, is it Fitor or Fidor? You have to correct oh, my pronunciation there. What was that? Fitor. Tour. Okay. Why don't you, why don't you uh, introduce yourselves uh, to the podcast audience? Um, again, we're, we're thrilled that you would be able to do this. I know we got a big time zone variance here, but um, we really wanted you to be part of our 200th episode because of how much you're enjoying the content and what you're doing with it. So go ahead and, and please introduce yourself. I guess we could talk, we could start with David and then, uh, the, the other two, please introduce yourself. Sure. Um, well, great to talk to you, uh, Mike and Trey. Uh, I'm David Muniz. Uh, I'm American. Uh, I work here in Albania, um, and I'm a big uh, follower of the Naked Bible uh, and, and your work. Uh, and in fact, I, I shared a copy of The Unseen Realm uh, with Fitor and Bruna, and, and that's how all this got started here in Albania. Oh, wow. Very remarkable. My name is Bruna, and I work in Tirana, and I am a colleague of David, and this is how uh, I had an opportunity after he shared with me a copy with the, of the book, and then I shared it uh, with the pastor, Pastor Fitor. Yeah, uh, she shared it with me, but because she is my daughter. And, uh, <laughs> okay. And when she told me about this uh, book, I was really... I wanted to know about more about this book, and I said to her, "Please can can find a copy." And uh, so through uh, David, we had the opportunity to have a copy of uh, of the book, and uh, I was completely catched at the moment that I opened the book, and I was uh, uh, reading about the Psalm twenty eighty two verse one. I was completely catched and shocked from this because. It's like a person that had been blind and in a moment he can see. Yeah. And, and I thought, uh, you know, I have to start. So we started as a family. Every every day, every morning, we will uh, read the book together. And uh, so we continue for, for a time. And then uh, uh, we talk as a family and I thought it's time to, to, to raise up a, a team a group of people from the church and uh, starting uh, a group of study this book. So this was the, the beginning, let, let's say. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I understand what you're saying with Psalm 82. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. That's how I start the book. <laughs> yeah, but but you know what? Sometimes it looks like uh, the, the the people that uh, uh, or I'm, I'm talking Albanian. Uh, it's like those gold searchers that are able to find a dust of gold uh, in the river. And they knew that that's the evidence that they're able to find more gold if they continued with that stream of river. And the same happened with me. In moment that you came and got got to feel him. At the time, Libri. I was caught by this book, uh, by the beginning of this book. Kisha bindi ne plots. Uh, I was fully convinced that I had to continue. And as I said, uh, we were able to put together a team of 20 people from the church, approximately 20 people. Një pies janë pies e leadershipit. A part of this group is part of the leadership in the church, leadership team. The The rest of the group are individuals who had a thirst and they really wanted to go deep in the word of God. So therefore we embarked on this journey. And I can say that that's why it's a journey that has brought us into depth that we had never envisioned we would go. But now it seems like it's impossible to get away or to get disattached from what we've been studying. And we continuously debate, have continuous debate within the group. And it's a healthy and a pleasant debate. It's not that it's yeah. exhausting or tiresome. And I can really say that it was a blessing. Well, I, I'm, boy, what can I say? I'm, it's a little overwhelming. I mean, I, I'm very grateful that uh, it has been such a blessing and but I'm honestly, I'm more grateful that you made so much effort, you know, to teach other people, you know, have them read the book because that's, that's why we do it. Um, I mean, I, obviously I, I know just what you're talking about. Once, once you see it, you can't unsee it, you know, it just, there it is. And, uh, you know, that, that's what happened to me. So I'm, I'm always thrilled to hear that happening, you know, elsewhere and to other people. Yeah. And I, I, Mike, I think it's quite remarkable because I know on your podcast, you talk about all the time how there's only a few people in every church, usually, that are really mm -hmm. looking to go deeper and how hard it is to, to get a, a group of people together that all of whom see this or are interested in yeah. you know, Middle Earth residents, as you would call them. And I, I can tell you, if we were back home, I don't think I would have shared this with a pastor and had 20 people reading the book you know, a year later with plans for even more with mm -hmm. sermon, sermons being yep. being themed on this content and to bring this out. Uh, it's really quite remarkable. And I, I attribute it to the fact that here in Albania, people don't have uh, a denominational overlay. You know, they don't have yeah. all this tradition, which can sometimes get in the way, as you know, um, of, of, of just seeing this for what it is, because we all have these, I don't know, these traditions about what the Bible yeah. is theological traditions you know and so it's it's really refreshing to see people who believers who are they look at the bible they see what it says and they just accept it you know yeah what what, what what's the harm you know let's just look at the text what's right, exactly. The harm? <laughs> exactly exactly then yeah. wow that, that, that's really neat now what what um I, i'm curious david or uh you know bruno have you have you tried um it sounds like like you're just going with the the heavy dose, you know, unseen realm. And I'm wondering about if you've read Supernatural or tried to use any of that. I, I mean, I have to wonder about also what what uh, languages are needed. I mean, I, I'm sure you all know about the translation project, and I'm right. I'm wondering if we have 
anything either running or completed that would would serve somebody um, who doesn't have English there? Mm. Um, well, I mean, as you know, we've been discussing uh, translating supernatural mm. for the rest of the congregation. I think it's a good a good move. I mean, I I've only read the Unseen Realm. I've never mm. read Supernatural. I need I need the footnotes. I need to kind of read through this and see yeah. maybe every time. But you really need to you need to see it for yourself. I, you know, Albania. I'll let. Uh, Fitor and Bruno talk more about the Albanian language and, and the peculiarities of it. it it's a very, it has, it's a language with very, very old roots. And it's also very, very different from any of the languages in the neighboring countries. Um, but a lot of people here, in addition to speaking Albanian, they also speak Italian, maybe mm -hmm. French, maybe German. So those, those kind of bigger European languages, um, there's a lot of people here who speak them, speak them well. And English is very widely spoken here by, by people who are educated, just about everyone, especially younger people. Are learning English, so it's actually much more useful here English than e even say in some of the neighboring countries like Serbia or Greece or what. Mm -hmm. So you can penetrate pretty far with that. Uh, and Albanians tend to know that their language is is, is really difficult and obscure. They 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 readily learn other languages much more so than other people that I've. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I really think Fitor and Bruno should also speak to that. Um, I would like to also uh, pinpoint the fact that when it comes to the book, given with the Ancien Realm, it's not so easy to be understood by Albanians, regardless right. of level of English or uh, competency. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, what we've been doing as a group is um, dividing chapters and translating them so that the entire team could work off the same version. And then we're able to go back and mm -hmm. um, discuss mm -hmm. that and turn that uh, chapter into a discussion point or yeah. the focus of discussion. So what usually happens is that on Mondays, um, the member of the team that will be doing the translation will be actually a trans will be translating the chapter that is provided to the team the week after. And then throughout the following week, the entire team prepares, reads, uh, makes notes and comments, and then we discuss that offer the next uh, week. Uh, so this is how we've been going through um, in this process. But... Uh -huh. But I'm very grateful to Dr. Heiser. For the opportunity you've granted to us through this book. We had never, for example, anticipated or thought that we would go through the analysis of divine hierarchy. Or even actually connecting that with Ephesians. Mm -hmm. Because really, it seemed like the unseen realm was really unseen. Mm -hmm. Until this window was opened unto us. So we are very grateful of this opportunity you've given to us through this work. Because it's not rare that in churches you find questions related to this. Uh, the, wow. Such example, uh, uh, such as, for example, the book of Job. For example, when we were unable to respond or to answer the question, how did Satan make it into God's presence? But only through this book. And we were able to respond to it. Um, wow, that's yeah. Well, I, that's just so neat. <laughs> you know, um, that's it's just really all the effort you put into it, and it, it's really a good approach. You know, to break it down like you're doing, and then little you know translate portions. I mean that. Yeah, I I, I haven't cut run into anybody else, uh, any any other church that's. It's doing that. There, there are churches using supernatural, but um, mm -hmm. I, I wish they would do it with unseen realm. And I, I think you know mm -hmm. there are a handful of, that are, are trying to do something there. But yeah, you you folks are just way ahead. Um, it's it's really it's really admirable to be honest with you.
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love hearing about it. Well, the umbo pregatism is a dot dot geography cosmic, a cachini capital medvorten gasmus. Um, for example, what has really uh, been something that has really touched and impacted me is when we talk about uh, cosmic geography. For example, when we talked, um, when uh, it speaks about the story of Naaman, We never understood why did he, for example, ask for some land from the from Israel, for example, to bring it over. And the way cosmic geography introduced and presented it to us. Uh, makes it uh, very clear its presentation to the church. And it really provides space for the church. It's not difficult for the church to understand when we talk about geographic, uh, cosmic geography. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, oh, good, good example. And also another thing that we've learned from this book is uh, the, the idea to go deep, to rummage in the word of God. Uh, And then to continue ask questions about difficult passages we find in the scriptures. Whereas from before, we would actually skip them. I'm really grateful to God because it really broadens our understanding of Him. And also this cooperation uh, with between his creatures. That will then lead into worship. For Perendina, for God. Yeah. yeah, well that that's you know, I, I hate to put it this way, but that's that's a missing element in a lot of places. So you're you're really seeing the things I, I was hoping readers would see and connecting those dots. Um, you know, Mike, I wanted just to say, too, um, one of the, the interesting phenomena, phenomena that, that, that occurred with the study group in the church, mm-hmm. that at the moment that the book was available, there were a large number of people in the church leadership, among kind of the intellectuals in the church, who had questions about many different yeah. difficult parts of scripture, like Genesis 6, like Babel, you know, all the, the parts that you cover in the book and the kinds of things that are the, are the you know, uh, frequent. <laughs> discussed in Christian Middle Earth, well, these folks were ready and looking for answers and afraid to ask. Mm-hmm. And so the timing of all this, I mean, obviously a divine appointment on multiple levels, yeah. but yeah, the book was able to suddenly bring all these folks together and start mm-hmm. answering these questions in, in a way that none of them would have expected. So it's been a real blessing on that front too, which suggests to me there's a lot more people out there who could benefit from this, but I think we know that. Yeah, yeah. What were, uh, how, how, Did they come across and have these questions by their own uh, reading, their own study, or do they have, you know, exposure to other things that would, um, you know, other, I don't know, radio, TV, whatever, uh, Mm -hmm. other ministries that would would have planted the questions? No, it's simply from the study of this book, actually. And if you, for example, were to be present in our study group, there is really great joy in the dynamic of our discussion. It's it like when it comes, uh, when you actually are part of a, such a study group, people should be very sober and very uh, dim and not happy, but it's totally the opposite <laughs> when the group gets together. Uh, 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 uh
And they sometimes come with questions that go even beyond the unseen part of the unseen you brought to us. And I, I have to really bring them down. I tell them, please, you, we have to be careful because the, the, I mean, you have to really be careful when it comes to how far can you go. Right, right. For the naturist, we have to grumble or the pure Um, we've had some questions and we did actually write them down. We have some of them. The one paraset organizoi kita kim un fola meta de thash thoni se cilaj vlera ke ju keni par nga libri dhe cilat jam pytjet. And just before this uh, discussion that we're holding together, I asked them if they could share with us some of the values of the book and uh, some of the questions that they have seen. The pjesa tyre që un po flas janë vlera që ata shikojnë. And some of the things that I've been sharing are the values that the group has noticed in this book. Dhe jemi vetëm të kapitulli 25. And uh, we are currently, as we speak, starting chapter 25. Sëpse vërtet a është ka raste, ka raste që një, sepse ne po e studiojmë kapitull pas kapitulli. As I said, we're starting it chapter after chapter. Edhe ka raste që në një kapitull ne qëndrojmë. And it hasn't been that, dy, në dy javë. That we spent only one week per chapter. There are weeks that, or there are times when we've spent more than a week, maybe two weeks per chapter. Se duam që ta tresim atë që le zëjmë. For we really want to digest what we mean, what we have been studying. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear, you know, uh, your impressions and, you know, some questions, but the, you're amazingly tenacious. <laughs> I don't know if that, I'm trying to think of another word, but uh, maybe something easier to translate, but dedicated, dedicated. Yeah. 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 I don't know if it's appropriate to ask any questions because I know that the group will ask me uh, next Monday when we meet. <laughs> ask any questions on our behalf? <laughs> well, yeah, we we could go ahead and if if you if uh, Pastor has a couple of those questions, sure, why not? Okay. Uh, one of the questions is. Why God treated differently the two divine rebellions, the one on Genesis 3 and the other on Genesis 6? Then Akash was sentenced to live in the underworld while the proud Bene Elohim were bound in chains in darkness. Um, the former gets some autonomy of activity and the latter are imprisoned, awaiting judgment. Mm -hmm. Another question would be, uh, why God insisted so much for a no trespassing policy between physical and spiritual realms when in the new Edenic earth, people and divine beings would live together? Well, I think the, the, the second one, I think we have a little more uh, information about that because it wasn't it, the second rebellion it god wasn't forbidding coexistence you know he is forbidding other spiritual powers from you know having their own followings raising up their own peoples uh, which would create you know rivalries and you know according to psalm 82 it creates a circumstance where some of those beings are are being looked upon as objects of worship uh, and really doing things to solicit that kind of response uh, from people um so i i don't think that that coexistence in and of itself uh it was the problem uh it it went considerably beyond that and You know, I don't know if, if any of the group has read or caught any of the podcast episodes where we talk about the content of Reversing Hermon, uh, the other book. Right. But there, there's also an element of divine beings presuming uh, to dispense certain knowledge to humans um, that results in their own self-destruction and idolatry. So that was also an element of what's going on here as well. 
so that that's the second part. The first part, you know, we're we're not really told uh, specifically, you know, why, you know, God more or less takes, you know, the the position that He does. I I would say this though, the the initial rebellion really is about, obviously the the loss of of mortality, and you know the the you know the whole episode while it's it's you know something that you know god certainly didn't ordain you know or or want you know he can you know and and will you know rectify that situation you know through through redemption you know the they will have eternal life you know regardless anyway and the the nakash you know the serpent you know commits this this particular crime uh, to to rob humans, you know, through deception of, of, you know, immortality and life with God. Um, you know, God, of course, comes right back and says, well, you know, we're going to take care of that problem. We're going to raise up a, mm -hmm. a deliverer, an answer, you know, from the seed of the woman, you know, we're not going to, we're still going to use humans. We're not wiping them, you know, off the planet. We're not, there is no plan B. Uh, we're going to, you know, have humans involved and from humans, I will, I will make a solution. You know, and God, of course, anticipated that. I mean, this this was no surprise. Um, you know, offering Himself through through the, the Son as a solution to that. You know, the other the other incident is a little bit different in that what they do essentially causes, if I can put it this way, uh, I mean, th there are no you know hard problems for God. But it causes uh, more difficulty because you have a situation where humans are essentially enabled and taught uh, to destroy themselves, you know, more effectively. And so it's really an attack not on on human destiny or, or human, you know, membership in the family, but it's really an, an assault on humanity itself, you know, to try to... Um, you know, really destroy, you know, people from the earth. The other one was, again, thinking that God, you know, we're going to get Adam and Eve to fall here, and then God's going to just wipe them out, and and that'll be the end of that. Uh, that isn't what happens. Their lives are preserved. But in the in the second instance, you've, you've sort of got a multiplication of the problem that now, you know, we take these fallen humans, and, you know, we, you know, we teach them things that, are going to direct their attention away from the plan of redemption, away from the true God. Uh, we're going to dispense knowledge that will produce idolatry and, mm. of course, self-destructive behavior. And I think what, what they do, the second rebellion, is actually more severe than the first. And I think that's part of why you know, God responds in the way he does to sort of kind of cut that off you sort of stop it in its tracks a little bit. But I think it, the, the more severe punishment uh, is actually merited. And and I, I say it that way because in the Second Temple period, this event, it's not the first event, it's not the fall. You, you know, that, that of course, is well known. And, and what happens there is well known. You know, we have, we're estranged from God. And, and now, you know, we're not going to have eternal life with him unless we are redeemed. But it's the second event that is viewed as more destructive and more of a problem uh, because it results in the proliferation of human depravity. So uh, in, in Judaism, Second Temple Judaism, it's actually the second event that, you know, is sort of is viewed as more of a catastrophe, more catastrophic consequences. Um, than even the first. I mean, it, it would be different if Adam and Eve get driven from the garden and then, you know, they realize what they've done and, you know, God offers them redemption and they have children and that the, they're able to teach their children about the true God and, 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 you know, they, they have eternal life, you know, through the grace of God and whatnot. It, if that was the circumstance, that isn't as bad as a world full of people that not only are they in that situation, Mm -hmm. But they are essentially taught to turn from God, to hate God, to prefer some other, you know, other entity. And, you know, again, to explore, you know, the, you know, forbidden knowledge and, and, and do practice, you know, practice idolatry and, and destroy the family unit through immorality and things like that. That's actually a much more severe problem because now you don't have 
just sort of one problem to solve. Believe in in the redemption that God offers, and 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 you're going to die in this life, but but you'll still have eternal life. You know, if if you only had that problem, that would be a whole lot better than having to navigate all of the things that tear us away from hearing the message and direct our attention toward, again, false gods. So I think that's why the, the, the problem was viewed more severely. And I think that would be a way you know, to parse the, the difference in the punishment. We don't have a verse or a passage that spells all that out, but I think it's discernible. Right, right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, besides this book that we're studying, um, do you, uh, Dr. Heiser, have any methods um, that you would maybe suggest that we continue uh, with our study besides what we're doing? When you say methods, do you mean tools to use or tools? Strategies. Strategies. Both tools and strategies. Um, it, it depends on what you have access to. I, I would I would recommend just generally, if you have uh, if everybody has internet access and and a and a, a computer or a laptop or, or even a phone uh, or a tablet or something like that, that you could Google Faith Life Study Bible. I think I think the direct address is Faith Life Bible. Let me look it up here quickly. Uh, but the Faith Life Study Bible is a a translation that we my employer created. I I contributed to it, but it's not my translation. Um, but it's a translation that we created, and it's a study Bible with about two or three million notes. Mm-hmm. And I wrote the notes for the Torah and Joshua and Judges mm-hmm. and Psalm 82 and Proverbs 8, you know, a few, a few other passages, uh, but it's free. And so that's a good resource just generally. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's www.faithlifebible.com. And it also comes with a Bible dictionary, the Lexham Bible Dictionary. I, I have a few articles in there, one on the Divine Council. Uh, one on Raphaim, one on the image of God, uh, that sort of thing. But those are good resources um, just in terms of something that everybody in, in in your group, certainly, and I would think even people in your church that are not in your group specifically, uh, could certainly use for Bible study. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it it's free. It, 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 yeah. you know, so it's it's right there. It's available. That's why we made it. You know, beyond that, there there are you know certain websites that um, you know would would certainly help. It, it, you're probably best served if I give you a list through email on those, and, and you could yeah. actually you can actually send me an email like what what kinds of things do you want to be able to do mm. or to read, and I can probably find uh, some things that will be uh, free and useful uh, yeah. at at the same time. So that. That's what I recommend. It just in terms of those strategies. Yeah. You know, my I, I did a I did a blog post on, you know, Heiser's Laws of Bible study where I, I list a few things that I think are helpful. However, having said that, I could send um parts of my book. Um I can't I, I wrote a, a series, it's gonna be out again in May. Uh mm-hmm. the sixty second scholar series. Uh, yeah. I, I had self-published that, and then it got picked up by a, a big publisher. And it's going to be out in May, but mm-hmm. there are, oh, there are probably fifteen or twenty little readings in that that are about uh, methods, about ways to think about Bible study that I could just send electronically yeah. um, as well. So, Thanks. yeah, give me give me a list of the kinds of things you you want to think about or want to read, and mm-hmm. then. Uh, I'll I'll look for that stuff on this end and and send it because we want it to be digital because it's convenient you can print it or put it on a phone or whatever and we don't want it to cost anything. Thank, by, thank by the you. way, if 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 you if you all wanted you know copies of Supernatural uh, in English, 
um, I could I could send you physical copies. Um, yeah. That would be most stuff to let me know. Most welcome. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you an address that that can get here quick. Yeah, very generous of you, Doctor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, you, you more or less have to just tell me what what you're what you're needing, yeah. and we'll figure out a way to get it to you. Yeah, I, I think in terms of the the translation project, we'll, we'll just ask for a few copies that, that multiple translators could have a copy to work yeah. on, and probably using the same method they use with the Unseen Realm. Oh, yeah. Um, but it, it it appears that it will not be that difficult. To, to get this translation done here. We have experienced translators. I mean, they've certainly been tested on uh, the more rigorous material already. And so they're ready to, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Dr. Heiser, we also want to ask you, I don't know if you've had any exposure to the Albanian language. I have not. No. Uh, because uh, through this study, we've seen that some Hebrew words find their true meaning in Albanian. Mm -hmm. For example, nefilim, nefilim. For example, the word nefilims. Nefilim. We have an Albanian word that says nefilim, which stands for in the beginning. <laughs> Well, that's interesting. Literally yeah. true. Uh, I would say Kokobe. Or the word Kokobe. Yeah. Um, or the Morning Star. Yeah. In Albanian can be translated verbatim from Albanian. I can make you the head. <laughs> which means it's the first thing that comes yeah yeah and and that that's that's morning star language in the astronomy you know, the star that appears first over the horizon yeah yeah, yeah. so it's translated verbatim from uh, Hebrew to Albanian. It's, it's very interesting yeah it would, uh, uh, it's very interesting about this because albanian actually has root words uh doctor that are some of the oldest root words that are still used in modern languages. So it has roots that go far, far back. Mm -hmm. um, and no one knows the, the true genesis of the language or all the circumstances how, around it. Quite how interesting. Was, yeah. How was, uh, what, what is the tradition or the history? And I know there's a, a, there's a blurred line between those two things, history and tradition, um, about bringing the gospel to that region of the world in, in other words is there a is there a, a strong tradition of you know some apostolic presence there you know like like there is with andrew he got to this and that country and you know yeah that sort of thing I mean, what what is what's the history of that can you tell me okay. yeah but uh, we started uh, the history with the, of uh, uh, the history of uh, gospel starts uh, from Apostle Paul, you, and uh, yeah, he speaks about uh, Albania, but not Albania by Dericum. He speaks at Roman 15, 19. Okay. Yeah, okay. So when uh, uh, he says, from uh, Jerusalem until in Illyricum, I have uh, fulfilled the proclaiming of the gospel of Christ. And uh, this is in the Romans, uh, Romans chapter 15, verse 19. And here he was, he is talking for Albania because Illyricum, yeah. Albania is part of Illyricum. Okay. And, uh, Apostle Paul has been here and he has started some churches in Albania. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. see, then, you know, then, I mean, Paul is obviously going to be, he's going to be speaking Greek, Hebrew, you know, probably Aramaic as well. So you could have, you could have loan words, you know, what, what scholars call loan words that get adopted into a local language. And especially if they're very specific, if they have religious import to them, that they, they get adopted into the language and they just become part of it then. That's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. because even some, uh, most of uh, Greek words, uh, old Greek words, mm -hmm. can be translated by Albanian. Yeah. Okay. Or some, uh, yeah. For for example, Aphrodita, Aphrodite. Aphrodite. Yeah. It's uh, in Albanian is uh, Aphroditas, which stands for the day is approaching, yeah. dawn is approaching. Yeah. Mm. 
It's very interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. But I can I can send you, Doctor Heiser, if you mm -hmm. uh, want some uh, words from the Bible that can be uh, can have a, a meanings in Albanian language. Yeah, I, yeah, I'd I'd like to see that. That would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, let's see. If there's anything else I wanted to to ask or to know. Um, let, let one more question before we we uh, wrap up. As far as your group, your study group, and the church, what percentage of the church is in this group? In other words, how do you have a, a church with a building? Is this a house church network? I mean, what what's the situation there? I'm just curious. I don't have any particular reason to ask, but I'm I'm just wondering, um, yeah, you know, where, where what the relationship is between the group. I know yeah. it's pastor led and then the church itself. Uh, uh, has two Sunday services. Uh, one of the services uh, uh, approximately gathers 300 people. The afternoon, while the morning service is approximately 200. Uh, we started the second service only two months ago. But also, Relindia has two other churches. One, churches. One in the rural area of Tirana. It's not a very big church. It's approximately 100 adults and 40 to 50 children. And nearly three years ago, we started another church in another area of Tirana, which is the capital of Albania. And that's a small church for the moment. But Relinda is the mother church in Germany. When it comes to the group that is currently studying your book, maybe a little less than half of it, Nine of them are members of the leadership team of the church. And at the same time, they are home group leaders. So they're able to introduce elements from the book uh, during their studies uh, with their home groups. While the other part, they are members of the church in Tirana, who want to go deep in the word of God, and they are full of passion for the word. When it comes to the intellectual element, for example, all of them have university degrees. Uh, Only one of them has high school diploma. Uh, uh, for example, part of the group are four doctors, medical doctors. Uh, we have economists in the group. In the group. Uh, specialist IT. Uh, IT specialists, etc. Uh, mm. So it's a consolidated group. And they look forward to to Monday studies. librin. <laughs> <laughs> And we are, to be honest, we're not only studying the book together, but this has helped us also get closer and stronger in our friendship with one another. So it's working on yeah, good. 
Shkryuar do, ne kemi qëtur, uh, kemi, se kemi hapur dhe një grup në Whatsapp. And also we are able to communicate with one another through the Whatsapp. Uh, and we have established a group, so we are able to communicate. Ne të gjith, jemi të gjith në, and we are all online në, in a way, communicating. We have a question as we read, everyone, uh, someone can post it in the group, and then we start giving ideas of what it would stand for. Mm-hmm. Wow. Do, do and it's really uh, well shaped in a way. And we've decided that once we complete the study of this book, we will uh, wait maybe for your suggestion for our next study group, study book. And once this group um, finalizes reading the Unseen Realm, we will be starting another study group. So the people that have already started the Unseen Realm, they will continue with the second group. Right. So the first group will continue, will start again with the materials we've already prepared. So much more that we will we will have ready available materials. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, that sounds like a, a thriving group, and it, it's an intentional group, obviously. And uh, boy, for for everybody listening to this, <laughs> whether you're in the U.S. or outside the U.S., this is what you should be doing. I mean, honestly, what what this group is doing is what you should be doing, you know, just sharing the content, getting people interested. Mm. You know, you people have to be stimulated to, you know, just to get in, I hate to say it, but to get interested in their Bible. And in, in your case, I mean, you had all these questions, you were already interested, but, you know, some, some Christians just, they need to, they need to be shown that there are things to think about here that are really important mm. and, and to, to sort of spark that interest. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I'm I'm really I'm really happy that we could do this and and connect and yeah. you know you could be part of the the 200th episode, but also I mean just apart from that, just to hear it, um, we will you know get me the information we talked about in email, and yeah. you know, we can get you some other things, and then we can we can continue the conversation about yeah. not necessarily well the, the translation is already happening, but who to you know how to how to pay you and you know get get that money to the church and then um, you guys can, can handle it however you want or how, how best to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Doctor, we'll, we'll follow yeah. up and, you know, like you said, more, more Christians need to be kind of, I don't know, somehow prodded into doing this. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's really, I think a shame that in, in places like the U S and other countries where we have so much, where we have so many resources where this is so much more available. People just aren't interested, and I think in some ways because they're sort of taught not to be through a variety of circumstances. And I, the, yeah. um, you know, and, and, I, and it's I feel very strongly that we have to start breaking up those artificial walls or breaking them down, really, mm-hmm. and and bringing the real Bible to people. Because I've been a Christian. I, I would, yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. But when I think of the church, I don't think of the U.S. That's true. I mean, I, I have to work in English, so I'm I'm stuck with that. Yeah. But, you know, like with, with McLaught to do the translations and, and yeah. you know, th- this year we're going to try to produce, you know, discipleship material or something uh, to keep keep that going. Um, the, yeah. the church is a whole lot bigger than the West. And I'm, I'm not I'm not thinking that it's my mission in life to to wake sleeping American Christians. It's wonderful to do that. And Unseen right. Realm does do that. But mm. that's just not how I think about the church. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's good. It's good. Yeah, it's, it's good. Again, I think people outside of, uh, of our country are more open uh, to this I really do. I, mean, I think this is this is proof of it, what we've mm. seen here in Albania. Yeah. And as I think you mentioned in a recent podcast, you're doing translations in a lot of languages that you didn't expect to be doing. I uh, had no idea. Yeah. yeah. Polish. I think you mentioned some others. So it's, yeah. it's interesting. all of those ex-communist countries where 
where people are, are much more open to, to seeing the scripture for what it what it is and what it says and not what they're told it says. That's very interesting. Yeah. 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 Well, thank thank uh, thank you all uh, and yeah. those in your group that that uh, are just listening and and you know didn't verbally participate. Thank all of you for for your dedication. It's just like I said, I I admire it, and this is pretty much exactly the kind of thing that you know I just want everybody who reads the book to do, you know, to, to multiply it, you know, get, get the content out. Yeah. yeah thank you very much. Yeah. Dr. Iser, it really was a privilege for yeah. me to talk to you and uh, thank you so much for uh, giving us the opportunity to use uh, your book and to have permission to make a photocopy of the chapters because uh, the guys are working on the, on the materials. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, thank you again. Yes. Yep. You're you're yep. welcome. Real privilege, Doctor Heiser, and and thank you for all that you do, and for all the the, the dedication that you've shown to this. It's really, uh, you're a light to us all, and and, uh, and a blessing. And, and thank you so much for that. Well, you're welcome, and and thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. you. All right. Well, there you go, Mike. Naked Bible around the world. Yeah. Yeah. To say the least. I mean, every one of those groups and ministries and just people in these places taking the content. I mean, it's, it's remarkable. It's admirable. You know, every one of them, this is the kind of thing that uh, I, you know, when I wrote Unseen Realm anyway, that I was really hoping, hoping would happen. And then when, you know, when the podcast, you know, sort of started becoming what it, you know, what it is, you know, with, you know, when you basically contacted me out of the blue and said, hey, this is kind of a dumb thing to stop doing your podcast. <laughs> you know, when you talk me back into that, it's like, yep, this is this is kind of what we were hoping for as far as getting the content out and having it be, you know, meaningful and beneficial. So, yeah, this was a good one. Yeah, I had no doubt, Mike, actually, because I knew the importance of this content. So uh, it actually doesn't surprise me and shock me. So I'm just glad you had a rat on my cage there, so that was a good thing. <laughs> well, it's been fun, and um, hopefully we have no plans to stop. So, oh, just no, nope, none at all. Yep, just so expect it, we'll, we'll blink, and then we'll have three hundred. You know, it's just there, there will be. I know, and and you know, we're going to Israel this year, and we were we were thinking that maybe this would coincide with that trip, but it didn't. But we're gonna have to do something special for three hundred, Mike. We're just going to yeah. have to do something. We're going to force ourselves because that'll be, you know, three or four. That'd be what, maybe four, five years into it. So we're going to have to do something spectacular yeah. for 300. We're going to have to just force ourselves to do it. Right. Where do you want to go? <laughs> we're, we're, maybe we'll go to that's Albania. What that's what I'm hearing at all. That. I want to go. Somewhere. Maybe we'll go. We'll do a world tour and just uh, we'll interview these people live. How, maybe something like that or. We'll have some big party and we'll have everybody come or something. And uh, I don't know. Yeah. We need to figure something out because we, we got to do something fun. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to argue against it. All right. I could, I could just hear the wheels turning already. So, Absolutely. Well, we've got 100 yeah, episodes to um, come up so. with something. You know, we get we, we got a while. So we, we could do something. We could figure something out. But all right, Mike. Well, it's been fun. And uh we appreciate you keep cranking out the content and uh, we're just going to keep chugging along. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the topical stuff, you know, the, the Q and A's and whatnot. There's variety there. So, you know, then, then you do, you do enough of those and it's like, okay, let, I'm in the mood for the book study now. So it, it's, yeah, it, it's not getting old. It's not getting old at all. Well, we appreciate everybody who's listened to us and uh, we just want to say, you know, heartfelt thank you and, God bless to everybody out there who listens to our show and spreads uh, the Naked Bible concepts to their church and their friends and family and wherever they may go. And Mike, hopefully 2018 and beyond, we're going to continue to grow and grow and grow. And so, you know, I just want to thank everybody for listening to the Naked Bible Podcast. God bless. Thanks for listening to the Naked Bible Podcast. To support this podcast, visit www.nakedbibleblog.com. To learn more about Dr. Heiser's other websites and blogs, go to www.drmsh.com.